Hey guys, Philosopher here, and today I have with me Cerebro. Now, if you've been hiding under a rock and you don't know who Cerebro is, uh, he is the community manager for Boundless, which is the studio at Scopely that creates Marvel Strike Force. And he has a difficult job because he's not the CEO of Boundless. He's not the CEO of Scopely. He is uh, a guy who it listens to our concerns who listens to the issues that we raise, and he ultimately uh, does his best to um, you know, respond to them and to try to take our questions. And I'll just say as somebody in life who's had to, to answer a lot of tough questions at times, you get, some of you know I'm a lawyer and I get asked tough questions by judges or in the media or whatever, uh, I know he's got a tough job. And so uh, please keep that in mind when you you hear his questions and answers here. He's not always going to have an answer at the top of his head. He doesn't know what I'm going to ask, uh, but he I think uh, he hopefully knows that I'm going to try to be fair with him. And I, I have spent a lot of time gathering questions from the community, and I know this is a time. Yeah, I mean, I, a lot of questions. We got tons, and I want to, I will try to, dis I'm going to try to display some of them directly. But I thought as a starting point, I've got, I'm showing the blog up here. If people haven't read it, uh, you should. I'll put a link to it in the description of this video. But this was, I think, something we really anticipated. There's a lot of stuff in here. Can you help everyone understand how does how do you guys see the direction of the game? What, what do you guys? Where do you? What do you? What What are you guys trying to accomplish at a, at a kind of a high level here? Sure. So, um, you know, I think what what we're talking about here is like the vision for the game, right? Um, and, uh, it's, it's the type of thing that, um, someone like Jason Bender, you know, who's our creative director is really, uh, in charge of managing. And there's a couple of other people as well, but, um, you know, you've, you've got a bunch of different, um, you know, areas of the game, um, and you kind of try to, you know, do your best to, to, to make them line up and, and to make them work with each other. Um, you know, we've, we've got, for, for example, um, you get like new features that, that come out. Um, and then you try and do your best to say like, okay, how does that line up with how we're, we're supporting like a Marvel theatrical release, right? And then like, how does that line up with, you know, some other new characters that we have, you know, in the pipeline? There's, um, there's lots of different, like what you would call tracks for the game. And um, yeah, it's just trying to get them all to line up and trying to make sure that you're, you're giving a good amount of tension attention to to um, each of those tracks, and you know I think what happens is you know when when uh, because a lot of the game is like feeling right like a lot of times when you hear feedback from players, it's you know it, they don't say like I necessarily say I think this a lot of times it's I feel this right I feel like we're not getting enough of this resource or I feel that this is too hard or you know um, so. You know, I what I try and do is I try and take that uh, feedback that the community gives, and then try and um, quantify it for for the team, and and try to give them very specific, you know, pieces of feedback on how we can uh, how we can move forward. So, um, yeah, the 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 vision for the game it's it's a thing that that all of our departments are always working on, right? We've got. Mm -hmm. You know the, the the combat pod, which is the character designer guys that that you see the most on Strike Time. We've got our mission designers. You know um, there are different pods that work on different new features. Um, you've got you know our live operations, and um, so it's yeah, it's it's a bunch of of cooks in this kitchen all trying to work together to make this this really awesome gumbo. Yeah. Well, one thing I've noticed. I mean, I've seen a trend in the game since I've been playing. I think 16, 17 months. There's been become there's been more of a focus on raiding as an alliance that more recently. There's been this focus on you, know, you had Silver Surfer released through the raid milestones. We had the Doom raids, they had Blue ISO released. Now you've got this teal gear that's going to be released through the raids, obviously generating a lot of controversy. What I thought would be helpful is for you, for people to understand what what are you guys trying to accomplish with that? What what is why what is your reasoning behind it? Just so people understand what your view is. Uh, what is the uh, intention? Yep. 
Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, what's the goal essentially? What are you trying to? What do you? Well, how do you view this changing the game? And and what are you trying to accomplish with it? Just so people understand your perspective. Sure. Well, the the ultimate goal for for just about everything we do is engagement, right? We we want to give people a reason to, um, you know, good reasons to to log in every and play every day. That's the that's the ultimate goal. I mean, like that's. It is. It's one of the golden, you know, rules that, um, you know, our our former president of the studio, who's now the uh, chief product officer uh, for Scopely. Um, so that's great. Like he even went higher up in, into the company, so he can help spread this idea around. Is let's make games that people want to play every single day. Mm-hmm. And I think that's that's a great mission statement because just about everybody in the studio. Can can use that to what they're doing, mm-hmm. right? Uh, if we're ever straying from that, if we're ever getting to the point where, like, hey, we're you know this, what we're doing is actually getting people away from wanting to log in every day. That's a massive problem because that really violates our our golden rule. So, at the highest level, I'd say that's what we want to accomplish. We want to have something that gives people a good reason to log in and play every day. Yeah, what I one thing that uh, people ask me is, do do the devs actually play the game? Are there devs who play who play Marvel Strike Force, and, and to what extent? Absolutely. So um, there's there's actually a uh, we ha- we have so we live on Slack right now. If you guys don't know what Slack is, it's um, I guess you could kind of crudely think of it as kind of like Skype. But it's just it's a lot easier to have like breakout rooms and conversations with people. So we just live in this Slack universe right now. Uh, and we have a bunch of different Slack channels dedicated to like all the different parts of the game. Um, one of these Slack channels we have is is for, um, you know, some of the the uh, high level players in the game. So there's like almost 30 people in this chat of devs that where we are you know, what you would consider to be high level players. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, we, we absolutely play the game. I just think what, I think what happens is uh, there's a perception that, and, and a lot of it's true is like, we don't play the game the way that player, some players do. Um, for, and I'll give you a good example of this is, you know, when we, uh, first announced that we were adding ISO 8 requirements to uh, Doom Raid, one of the things that, that that players came back with is, oh man, they're trying to break up this awesome strategy that we came up with of trying to send everybody just up a middle lane, right? Instead of having everybody mm-hmm. having individual lanes, we send everybody up a middle lane and that's how we can do this. They're trying to break that up. We actually didn't know people were doing this. <laughs> Um, and that probably doesn't help our case of like, oh, well, you don't play the game. It's like, no, it's not that we don't play the game. It's just that we are not always playing it exactly the same way that you are. So, um, because there's different strategies and stuff for the game, right? Like that's one of the reasons why there are so many different content creators and you get guys who have like differences of opinion say, Hey, I'm playing this, this game this way and I'm doing really well. And then you have somebody else that comes in and says, well, actually, I'm doing it this way, and I think that my way is better than your way. So, you know, you're, you're always going to get some of that. But, yeah, we absolutely do, do play the game. We, we, uh, we understand some stuff. And, you know, um, occasionally, players are going to come up with things that we didn't think of, right? That, that hap- that's happened a number of times. And I think that our combat team has really embraced that, right? Mm-hmm. Like, at this point, they want to see what players are going to come up with but with this new team with you know like the skill team they're like hey you guys show us how are you going to build these skill teams so um yeah we're we're not going to think of everything um you know we're we're not always going to to play the game exactly the way you guys do um but that's that's why we have this dialogue right you tell us you you let us know if we're not thinking of something please let us know well, and that's well. That's why I wanted. To, one thing I did want to ask you as well is, I don't think people see what it is you do to gather input from the community. In other words, are you reading Reddit? How often are you reading Reddit? What are you? Where Where are you? Are you on Twitter and Reddit? On Are you watching content creators? What are you doing to, to learn kind of what the community's views are? Yeah, all those things. So um, we have a. So I use uh, what's called it's a sentiment tracking software. 
So it's a platform. So it pulls in uh, comments from Reddit, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Discord server, Instagram. And <clears throat> what it does is it, it's, it's a really easy way for me to log in every day and see kind of what the big topics are. It takes all, those, all that stuff and then puts it in one place and then also tries to, you know, it creates like word clouds out of it, right? Like, so what are the characters that are people are talking about the most? Um, which, by the way, like the most talked about character for, since she's been released has been Emma Frost. Like every single week, we always look at the word cloud and we're like, okay, is anybody going to dethrone Emma this week? Uh, which is really hard to do. Um, and, you know, it looks at sentiment. And so, like, hey, these, these are the things that people say there is good. This is great. They're thanking us for. And they say, like, this is bad. You know, uh, this is terrible. This is not working, right? And so I can click on all of those word clouds, those things in word clouds. If someone says, like, you know, not working. Oh, I'm going to click on this, and I want, it'll show me a list of all the things that people have said of, like, how things are not working in the game. Um, so... You know, even if I'm not interacting all the time, I guarantee you that that we're reading it. And then what I have to do is I take all that all that uh, feedback and I have to prioritize it with the team, right? Um, because if I go to the team and say, "Here's 50 things that the community has to say," they're gonna be like, "Okay, we don't know what to do with this," right? Like I mm -hmm. have to I have to look at that and be like, "Okay, here are the five most important things that were said last week that that we should really." discuss and, and talk about and, um, you know, see, see what we can do things about. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think that's probably the, a good kind of overview of how, you know, the, the, that feedback loop works. And then, you know, what, what comes out of those conversations that ends up in our Friday blogs, right? So that, and you know, sometimes the Friday blogs have a lot of interesting stuff. Sometimes it's just the, here's the blitzes that are coming next week. But if you guys read those every Friday at 2 o'clock, that's really where we want to make sure that the outcomes of those conversations are uh, made known to the players. Yeah, I, I think that uh, I hear you. I wanted people to see that because I see some of what you're doing and and uh, uh, and uh, and some and some people don't. So I want uh, everyone to see. So one one question I actually have put up here that I thought would be, you know, and I'll try to blow it. It's too small, right? So let me, but let me, I'll read it to you. It was from a member of the community. Can you ask if they've considered it all, essentially putting in, he, he says training mats, but he means ability mats. This is actually a new player problem, a mid-game player problem. And I'm trying to highlight issues that relate to everybody in the community. He's saying T2s, which are the blue ability mats, only drop at Ultima 6. Is there any harm in adding T2s to U7? Uh, you know, for example, you know, in other words, some of the blue ability mats to the later raids. This is actually so that, a big problem right now for mid game players. Interesting. Um, I didn't realize that that T2s were such a big problem. You know, there there are very much are there are definitely things that we don't want to be problems. Right. I don't know that th if this is one of them, but I will write it down right now. Um yeah, it's essentially they're yeah, actually times, buying them in the store. They're actually mid game players are like buying for gold T twos because they're running out yeah. of because they've moved to U seven. They don't get them anymore. Got it. Got it. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll bring that up with the team. Um, yeah, I mean, it, a lot of times, you know, if we increase uh, the the availability to stuff, it's because you know we look at it and we're like, actually, yeah, it's it's we're not putting enough of this stuff into the economy, right? Or we're not making this accessible enough. Yeah. Um, so I've got, I've got it down on my list now. Well, it's good. This is, I feel like I, what I'm trying to do here is be a representative, let everyone's voice be heard. And some of the things you're not going to have answers for, but it's more so that people can have their views out there and raise issues. So I'm going to try to do my best. Here's another question. This I thought was interesting, uh, because this got a lot of, a lot of, uh, positive interaction. People, I was trying to pick ones that people were really interested in. He says, I'll be interested to know what the plans are for beefing up the stats for the year one characters that have been useless now. 
Cree hand ravagers, Wakanda example, or for, for some examples, I will say I have a, a friend who started the game recently and he, he didn't understand why I told them Spider-Man and Iron Man were not very good characters and so forth. You know, what can you tell people? And then he's also asking about the Hulk achievement milestones. Any, can, anything you can say about that uh, would be, uh, would be of interest to folks. Well, that's that this is good. It's going to be the internal balance of the game. Like that's, yep. Look, you think about any think about any um, heavily character based uh, live service game, right? Like anyone, you think of like you know Overwatch or League of Legends. Um, when you look at those games, uh, for anyone out there that actually plays them, um, how many of those games are one hundred percent of the roster usable at any given time? Mm -hmm. Not many. Right? right. Like for the most part, you're going to look at them and be like, you know, really like the top 20 to 30 percent are probably like the meta. And then there's everything else. Um, but, you know, it again, it's 100 percent of, of the characters being being usable or meta is just is not the case with just about any type of of, uh, of you know, free to play game that's heavily um, focused on having a large roster of characters. So, um, you know, that's, that's going to be our, our, um, the thing that we're always working on. You know, we just brought up, you know, we took arguably one of the worst characters in the game, Nebula and made her one of the best. So that's something we're going to continue to the stuff like that. We will continue to do. Yeah. I think that that was, by the way, that stuff is very well received. I mean, I, I, uh, that when you do, re, you know, new teams that include older characters, I think people like that. People like using the characters that they had used before. And I know in the time I've been here, the Wave 1 Avengers rework was one of those popular things you did. Uh, and frankly, got people like me who otherwise wouldn't have invested in the team to invest in them. Because I was a newer player at the time who loved those characters from the movies and was excited to play with them. Um, uh, let me hear. Here's another one. So this, okay. One, this is something I thought was an interesting question. I would have never thought to ask this, but he says the end game players, a lot of lower level gear, will there ever be a mechanic introduced to craft that into something else? In other words, is there a way where you could turn all your green gear into something that, that a new, an ender, a later game player would want to use? Got a lot of feedback. So I figured I'd ask. Yeah. Um, you know, that's one of those things that's just, it's all, it, it's all what we call the backlog. Like we've got, we have so many things we want to do, right? Um, and you know, unfortunately just, it comes down to like, you can only do so many of those things. Um, yep. I think that's I, fair. I, I, I can't give you an solid answer either way. I mean, like there, there's a ton of stuff that we would love to do, right? We just, Hey, if we could just snap our finger today and make it happen, we would. Um, but we, it's just not a priority. So will there ever, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't, we don't really talk in absolutes like, you'd be hard pressed to find in any of our messaging where we say we will always do this or we will never do that. Um, so I don't know. It, it's, we would like to, but yeah. whether or not it actually happens is something different. Yeah. So, okay. So here's another one. This is one I actually, I think I may know the answer from a conversation I'd have with a dev, but I want players to understand this because I get asked this all the time. People also want to see their arena teams win and lose they ask all this time they're like it's already in the file so make i'd like to see why i lost why i won can you explain the why that isn't the case why that's harder easier said than done <clears throat> oh you mean like a replay system exactly uh yeah th i think that is uh that when i talk about like our backlog of things we want to do that one is definitely something that's higher up on the list right like we we do want to have replay systems. We know that that's something that, you know, other games that are kind of in the similar genre have. Um, and uh, it's it's something we want to do. Um, yep. And then... Um, yeah, yeah, it's, so it, it's, it's on there. It's easier. Yeah, it's one thing, though. My, my understanding is it's it's just it's something that takes a, a decent amount of work to create. Is that fair to say? Like, you can't... It's, it's, not, a, it's, it's not a simple thing in terms of resources. That, that was my sense of things. Uh, sure. I'll ask a couple. Uh, I can answer a couple of things from the chat too. Somebody asked why the forty saved teams is gated to a level. Um, uh, it's just the way the game was made. It, it was just it's the it was the easiest way for us to give players more levels is to tie it to a level increase. 
Oh. Here's another thing, guys. Like, like uh, I know this happens a lot. Is you know when games get compared to each other, especially you know mobile games and what you know people call like hero collector games. Like, hey, this game does this. Why can't you do that? Um, it's like comparing buildings. Like, they're just not all built the same way, right? You different teams that create that created a, a, a building from the ground up, and um, they just don't all function the same way. So some some games it's easier to do things to scale things. Some games they were not meant to scale, so you have to go in there and rip things out and and do it over. Um, and, well, by the way, and I I agree with Lucky. By the way, I do think watching your defense teams would probably make you make you want to build them more, right? You'd be interested to see how they do. I think this is an interesting question. I could see why people were so interested in it. This one is a question I thought was interesting because I think this is something I'll just say as a lawyer. There's things that sometimes you leave deliberately vague in documents because you need to, you don't have it all planned out yet. But I do think a lot of players are asking this question. They're wondering this question about ISO four, blue four, ISO blue five, because you can't get that in the game yet. You know, what, what is, uh, what, what, what can you tell us about that? If anything, what's the status of it? It's, it's not currently on our, our roadmap. Like mm -hmm. we're, you know, Yep. If it was, we would have mentioned it in, in the blog, Got most it. likely. That, that's but a, it's, it's, interesting it's, it's going to be a while. Like it's, you know, we're, it's not like we're planning on coming out with four and five, like in, you know, like two months later or something like that. It's going to be down the road. That's very helpful information. I think that gives people, I think, a sense of what they should be doing with this. I mean, one issue that people have been raising, by the way, is that the ISO blue orbs don't give enough ions and that they have to, with the blue, they have to essentially purchase with cores extra blue ions uh is that something that the the dev team is aware of or has looked into that issue um let's see uh i haven't really had a conversation with them about it um but i just wrote it down um you know w whenever it comes to anything new um you know we tend to err on uh, we tend to be a bit conservative on things um because the the inverse can be really damaging. Um, so if ions, you know, are if if players are feeling a bit deficient on that for like the blue ions, um, it's most likely was. See, I'm going to be careful here. Like we're not trying to deliberately starve people. It's more just we want to err err on the side of being conservative, and then you know we can we can slowly you know. Uh, you know, release more um, in a bit over time. Um, I think, so here's the thing though. I think the difference is, is that I think we were a little bit slow to do that kind of stuff before. Um, whereas now we are going to be reviewing the things like this more regularly. Um, and I will also be reminding the team uh, about that as well. So um, yeah, it's something worth reviewing, but I don't have any answers as to, you know, if, if it, whether or not it's meeting our intention. That's usually, that's the sure. easiest way for me to ask the team, right? Yeah. Like, just pick any resource in the game. Pick, you know, uh, T4 ability mats, right? right? Go to the team and say, hey, the players are saying we don't have an access to enough T4 ability mats right now. Um, you know, how many are we giving out? They go check, and I say, okay, is that our intention? And they say, no, that's actually a bit lower. We could give out some more. I'm like, perfect, then we're agreed. We can, we can give out some more because we're not giving out as much as we intend to do. Mm -hmm. So uh, the intention is, is really a, is a big deal. You know, what, what we intend for things to happen, uh, and that's why you'll see that word used a lot, is you know, things either working or intended or they're not. Uh, because if they're not, that's a bug, right? Even if technically it's working properly, if things are not working the way that we designed it to do, that's a bug and we need to fix it. Yeah, I, I will say, um, yeah, I mean, what I've seen is essentially you, you end up having enough I, I, ISO pieces to upgrade, but you uh, constantly run out of ions right now just in terms of the numbers. But I appreciate, by the way, everyone should understand, Cerebro is not going to have answers to all of our questions right now. The point of this is to get them in front of him, and you, and we're, we're putting these issues in front of the devs. I, he doesn't know the questions in advance, so you can't expect him to have answers. So that's the no, thing. This, this is a good feedback session. Like I, again, like I'm writing down a number of these things to, to, to ensure that, that I talk to the team about it. So yeah, exactly. uh, you know, while I don't have answers for everything, I will certainly uh, try to go get them. Yeah. One thing that somebody said in the chat is a constant feedback I, I get. And I've seen this as a player as well, is that I think people are frustrated with the blue uh, orbs in that 
they are there's an RNG element to them. In other words, let's say I want to focus on blaster, I still get some other classes that are not blaster in those ions or in those uh, orbs. And then you know you'll sometimes be in a situation where you have two of one piece and a hundred of another, that sort of thing. I think people are, for what it's worth, I would just one piece of feedback I will give you as somebody who gets a lot of feedback from the community is people are frustrated with that. People are frustrated with an RNG element to that. And they would prefer to be able to get, the, when they get the blue ISO from Doom Rays, at least to have more control over the pieces that they get for what it's worth. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, now that is feedback that I have seen. Uh, I haven't had a ha chance to have a conversation with the, the team about it, but it's one of the topics I already had on my list um, in regards to the, uh, the, uh, the, the 2021 second half preview blog. So, you know, whenever we put out stuff like that, like, you know, that's when I go to my, sen my sentiment tracking software, uh, you know, my social listening software, and, and I get a bunch of that stuff and I take it to the team and say, all right, you know, here are the things that people like, here are the things they didn't like, let's discuss the things they didn't like. And here's the reasons why they didn't like it, yeah. why they're feeling, you know, frustrated about these things. So, yeah. Um, no, I, yes, I, I do play the game, the Chuck star. I've got my, my account is 9.6 million uh, TCP. Well, there you go. Um, all right, let's let's get another one. So here's this is the thing. I, somebody was asking a chat about gold. So that was a research you mentioned. We I got a, I had a lot of comments about gold. Here is an example. Okay, and uh, this guy's asking for gold blitz, and of course everyone you can see the reactions. He's like, "Can we have a gold blitz weekly?" People are concerned about the amount of gold. Now the level cap increase is gonna uh, get increased amount of gold. I I, I, I know you mentioned. Uh, kind of working as intended, or if it's the amount is this is this the amount of gold that the developers intend? What 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 did? Uh, can you give us anything more specific than that was in the the roadmap about that? Um, no, that you know that we have that high level goal of increasing it by up to eight million per month, and that's what we're doing for now. Um, you know, we will see how things go with with the level increase and you know we want to again that we want to make sure that the level progression feels good um and if it doesn't feel good then we'll we'll look at it again okay um and that's all people but again, we're usually going to err a little bit on the side of being conservative so yeah i look i appreciate you taking these questions because i know you're getting a lot of feedback from the chat i appreciate it um Here's, a, here's one that I thought was interesting. When will we get more good bio characters? What can you say to us about that? Because a lot of folks are feeling like, hey, my symbiotes aren't good enough in the raid. Is there? Are, can you say anything about this? If not, you can't. Then we'll move on to the next question. When are we going to get good bio characters? In other words, bio origin, because they're now in the Doom Raid, you need a bio. You know, in other words, your symbiotes, let's say your symbiotes oh, aren't cutting yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so... <laughs> whatever you could say, just just uh, whatever you can say. If you can't say anything, we'll move on. I don't want to put you in a spot because uh, I know you you're in a tough tough spot. Look, there. Uh, uh, the, this is what I'll say. A lot of a lot of the ways the game works is it comes in cycles, right? Um, and you know when we put out new content, um, especially stuff like a new raid, it's it's not designed to be beaten the same day, right? Like mm -hmm. it's. That that content is designed to be something that is going to be a, a hard mountain to climb. And then it gets um, easier as, one, the players get better, right? They they figure out the strategies they need to use. Um, two, they level up their, their rosters. And three, that we introduce new characters that are better suited for the task. Um, so, you know, right now, if there's a problem part of the raid, we most likely are thinking about giving the, you know, tools to help overcome it. Yeah. You're seeing some of the comments in the chat right now that actually, ironically, the symbiotes had been amazing in raids for a long time. They've gotten a little power crap. So this is now the new problem area in raids, which is uh, feedback. I wanted to make sure you got the reason I was getting questions about bio characters is because now the skill is easy for folks because we got some new power crep, you know, super amazing characters there, but the uh, bio is suffering. People are asking to see a better view of my shirt. Oh, wow. There you go. 
Anything special about that, about that shirt that you want to that you want to share? Oh wow, I see. I, I'm seeing some interesting questions on that. Um, well, right. I mean, you you guys figure out where it's from. <laughs> I'm going to hand you everything on a silver platter. There you go. Um, okay. This I thought was an interesting one. It hooks into a video that I had made recently. I'd love to know, uh, Commander Joe is asking, I'd love to know Cerebro's thoughts on how much time Scopely feels is reasonable for players to spend in the game on a daily basis. In other words, we all recognize this as a game that you you play daily and you get bonuses for playing. You know, you have daily challenges and energy and all that. And we all signed up for that. But it, it, some it, it, the amount of time, I think you have said in other contexts that you guys try, you don't want the amount of time to be too much. What, what is too much here? It's starting to feel, I think, for a lot of players now that the pandemic has ended, that it's it's too much. Yeah, you know, I think it's it's safe to say that. Um, so this is a two part question. Um, so first of all, how much time do we think is too much time? If people, I think, are spending more than two hours in the game a day, that's probably too much. That, that That's above our intention, right? Um, there's obviously an intended, you know, limit where we're like, you know, we don't want to try and, and push players to play more than that now. But the second part to that is there's time spent in the game and then there's time spent out of the game but you're still thinking about the game, right? Like you might be on msf.gg looking up some stats or you might be in a spreadsheet. Uh, you know, if you're an alliance leader, maybe you're trying to go through your uh, your members' rosters, that kind of stuff. Um, so with, I think that's something we don't account for enough in that equation, right? Because that's something we we hear about a lot, right? Is we, we is we've talked with players before about how much time they're spending in the game and they're like, well, yeah, that's, I spend less than two hours in the game, but then I also spend, you know, like another hour outside of the, you know, not actually physically playing the game, but thinking about the game or doing something related to the game, you know, uh, outside of it. So I think that's something that we need to get better at understanding. Um, we obviously do understand it to a certain degree because we've invested in, into doing things like the API. You know, we do want to do things like getting player rosters, which uh, that can be imported, which will help you know, alliance leaders and officers and that kind of stuff. So we are aware of it, right? Like we understand that that there is time spent outside of the game. I just think we need to get a little bit better at accounting for that when we have the conversations of. How much time are people spending thinking about Strike Force every day? Yeah, and oh, you know, the, the, the important thing here is like it's not just the time spent. It's like trying to what, what I care about is helping to make it part of people's. How does it fit into their daily life? Right? Like I got a bunch of things that I'm interested in. You know, outside of Strike Force, you know, I've got I love I love Magic the Gathering, as you can see by that you know big. Uh, uh, uncut sheet back there. I love rollerblading. I love, you know, spending time with my family and stuff, right? It's more of like, how can I work all this stuff into my daily, into my daily life? I think that's how we should really be thinking about it, right? It's not even so much as time spent in game, but making sure that it, it can accommodate most players' daily schedules. Um, I think that's so, so that's, important, that's, by the way. That, that what you just said, uh, Cerebro, I think is so important. I'll just say this as a player and speaking for a lot of players, is that the hardest thing at the game, like right now, I'm going to miss my arena payout because I'm interviewing you. Okay, it's going to come very soon. And I'm see, not going to get I've disrupted your daily life. That's, you, well, that's, that's fine. But my point is, it shouldn't be, right? It should, not, not, I mean, at least a lot of players will feel like you'll get it. I'll, I'll try to get to some of those questions. I'm trying my best to get to everyone's questions here. But I do think there is an element to which, whether it's war or raids or or read i think that being able to choose when you could do it i think would help players and the other thing you know somebody was saying here i'm sure you saw some of the comments in chat where people are like i spent four hours i spent five hours i spent this you know part of it is also it may not be time where the device is on maybe they're they're constantly checking their phone for a, a blitz or a war attack or whatever where you know, I think it, it, it potentially can create more time where they're devoted to the game than may be apparent from a statistic. Um, 
Well, one, let me, let me, I'm going to get one thing that somebody asked in the chat that I do think I want to raise to you and see it and see if you have any comment on is, you know, somebody asked about people leaving the game. Content creators have talked about it. Mobile gamer. And I had a video today and he talked about it. You know, the numbers are down and on Twitch and on YouTube and we're having less folks there. Is this something, is this something you're seeing on your end? Is there something, is this a concern of yours? Um, and, and, you know, is there anything you, you want to say to players about who are concerned about some of their friends leaving the game? Sure. Um, it's absolutely a thing. This is something that has happened, uh, you know, over the, especially over the month of May, um, we did see, uh, you know, uh, some drop off on, on a number of things, but the, but caveat that with that happened across the industry. Um, mm -hmm. As people got their vaccinations and, you know, a, a number of people got to, you know, return to their daily lives, they simply didn't have, they don't have the t either the time to spend or, you know. Um, yeah, I get it. The band. You know, they, yeah. they, they just, you know, they, for example, like, you know, I, uh, you know, when, when we're working, you know, it, it takes me probably a solid 45 minutes to, to drive to work. Well, that's an hour and a half of my day, right? If right now I've got an hour and a half, but now if all of a sudden I have to go back to the office, well, I just lost that hour and a half I have every day now. So, yep. yeah, it, 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 it absolutely has happened. Um, and it's been industry-wide. It's not just, you know, it, it's happened with a lot of things. Um, I mean, is it a concern? Of course it's a concern. Absolutely, it's a it's a concern. When, whenever you see numbers drop on anything, like the the team comes together and is like, okay, we need to identify what happened here. What can we do to try and 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 uh, curb this? Um, but you know, it's it's not like we're 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 lower than like pre pandemic levels, right? It's more like you saw a huge rise when the pandemic started, and you saw a drop off when a number of people now have been able to get their shots and and the the states have opened up you know california we can go back inside for for most places now um mm -hmm. you know you, those two things were in lockstep with each other yeah so one, one thing people ask about in the chat that i don't know if you're able to answer is whether or not the the team is aware of or doing anything regarding our locking in arena locking up players in arena do you have if, is there anything you're able to say about that if not i understand Yep. That's coming in the next patch. Um, Whoa, news. We we're, we're breaking news here today. Okay. We we haven't discussed it yet because we don't want to advertise, right? Like, look, whenever it comes to any type of like exploit, right, it's always tricky because it's like, yes, we want to address this. We do want players to know that we're aware of it. and we're... But if we message out about it, then that kind of raises the level of and then there are people that will try to take advantage while it still exists. So that's why we haven't talked about it. But uh, you've probably seen it. We put it on the Envoy Discord server, right? We, we put this out and said, hey, here's what we're planning on doing. Do you guys think this is will be sufficient? And, mm -hmm. you know, the feedback came back that this, this is going to be good. So, um, you know, for the people that are here on your stream that are the you know most well-informed people that are probably already aware of it. Yes, I'll tell you guys right now, it's, it's, we have a fix. It's just, we need a new version to come out before that, that new code is implemented. Wow. All right. Well, there you go. Um, let me, yeah, I got a few other ones here. Let me try. I'm going to try to get to, to questions. I know there's been a lot of questions in the chat. I'm trying to get ones here. This is a question I said is, one thing that the, the the stakes have now been raised for alliances with this the teal gear, and there's I think a concern not only a, between a, you know people within uh, you know is my alliance going to be able to get teal gear or not? Am I going to have to switch alliances? And then also within an alliance, hey, who's going to get this node? Who's going to finish at this level to get this teal gear? You know, is there is you know Scopely concerned about the impact that this is going to have on alliances, both between alliances, but and then within alliances, and you know, in terms of upping the stakes for alliance raids and what the re what the rewards are. Sure. So I think the first thing, like you know, I, I've I've seen the, the comments, right? Like you know, why is Scopely trying to trying to kill my alliance? That's not our goal, 
right? We're not trying to, to kill your alliance. Um, the, uh, but, you know, I, I could absolutely see why, you know, the, the people would have some of the reactions that they've had. Um, because, you know, we, we said that this is the primary way that you're going to earn teal gear. But we didn't say, like, well, here are also some other ways. So um, that's something that I directly need to... Th there's a couple of points that, that, that came from the blog that uh, I need to talk with the team about. We need to have a discussion and find out how we are to, uh, we're going to address those concerns. That's one of them. That's one of the big ones right there is, you know, how else can we talk about, about Teal Gear? How can we, you know, try and, and reassure people and, um, you know, hopefully they'll not just, uh, you know, blow up their alliances. Um, and the, uh, the second one is the proposed changes to real-time arena. Um, you know, we wanted, we want for there to be more of a reward for winning. I feel like you have to win the match. Um, but there's also been a, a lot of people that have been vocal about that they don't like that. They don't think it should switch from traits to knockouts and, and wins. Mm -hmm. So those are the two big pieces of critique that have come from the blog that we're going to discuss and, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll get a, a good path forward. I think I, I think that's that's I think that's fair. And I think people wanted to know whether you were hearing that 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 uh, criticism, that feedback. You know, this is one I, I will just say, you know, this is an example. I, I pulled this as an example that I don't think you need to even necessarily say more unless you want to. But this was an example where, hey, this essentially is a player. It's like I'm, you know, he's on a mid tier alliance and he's there's always been individual goals and alliance goals. That's been a strength of the game. When his alliance is suffering, what does he do? You know, does he have to leave his alliance in order to continue progression? Right. I think that's one flavor of this concern. I'm trying to approach it from different angles to represent different groups of players. But you get the idea. Right. And that, and that I think is, you know, he's he's concerned about that. Um you know, and then this is another one, you know, strain on alliances. I think you already talked about that um, issue, which is just he doesn't want his progress limited by that. I will say, I think, you know, part of what has happened, and this started with Silver Surfer, is just that be by increasing the importance of certain raids is you, there are some alliances that are like groups of real life friends where you have some people who are more advanced and some people who aren't, for example. And you have a situation where some parts of the alliance can do the Doom Raid and some parts can't. It creates maybe something you didn't intend, which is an alliance having some issues. So I, I know you already addressed it and I don't, I don't want to ne necessarily go through that again, but, but I appreciate the fact that you've heard that feedback. Yeah. I got to get a number of people, you know, in a, in a chat to, to discuss this. So, you know, I, I promise you it will be discussed. I just don't have any further details or answers right now. I appreciate it. By the way, everyone has to understand if he doesn't know the questions and he's just, it's frankly, it's a difficult job to be taking these rapid fire things. So I appreciate you doing that. Uh, I just, I only have two more queued up. So let me go through those. So one thing is, you know, it would, and then, okay. So he, he, I think this is really along the same lines. I, I want to reach this a lot because there's, I got so many comments along these lines. One thing I will just say is, one thing, a feedback I will give you is that one thing that is jarring to players right now is a new player can get through DD2, DD3, DD4 and kind of blow through those with orange gear. And now they're kind of like that. Then it's suddenly like, okay, now what do I do? Right now I hit a wall and it's, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of an adjustment to now, okay, now I need teal gear. I've got to join Alliance that does doom raids and so on and so forth. And maybe that's what the game intends, but it's definitely, it's definitely a shift. And, you know, I think the way the players view this is, you know, they're, they're concerned about now being in a spot where they need to have a competitive alliance in order to, to, to progress. So I appreciate you acknowledging that concern and getting folks together on that. Um, the last thing that I was going to raise is, and this is, I thought, kind of a fun question because I never considered this. This guy had some good questions. I, now I realize, I didn't even realize this picking out questions I thought were interesting. I got a couple from the same guy. But he says he wants to know, is DD5 the end of the road? Because Dorn Mamu is the big bad of Dark Dimension. Is this the end? Is this the end of Dark Dimension? That's what he wants to know. Uh, it's highly unlikely that this is the end <laughs> of Dark Dimension. But, you know, I can tell you that we've also got some ideas on, you know, uh, and, and again, these are just ideas on, you know, how we might mix up Dark Dimension uh, in the future. You know, I don't think we, we that we want to get to like you know, Dark Dimension Ten and have it be the same experience. Um, 
So, you know, I think that this is this will be an important chapter in in the the dark dimension feature. Um, but um, is it the the last one we'll ever see? No, probably not. Unlikely. Unlikely. So, well, I will just say to you guys, uh, you know, I, I, I and I and I'm saying this to you specifically, Cerebro. I really appreciate you taking the time to come on here and answer my questions and really they were you could tell they weren't mine they were the communities I, I put a lot of time into trying to curate and come up with questions from the community you didn't know the you didn't know the questions you didn't really know you and you were put on the spot on live on stream and getting everyone's feedback in real time it's not an easy thing to do and i appreciate it and i and i i hope i speak for other people in the community who appreciate that as well yeah you know uh again i I love, love hearing feedback. Um, you know, I, I, there's definitely sometimes, you know, where people like tell me about things like, how do you not know about this? I'm like, look, I, I don't know about 100% of everything that goes on. I, I, I just don't. That's why I need you guys to tell me. <laughs> so keep, keep giving me your feedback. Um, and, uh, I'll, I'll keep discussing it with the team and we will keep reporting back through those Friday blogs, uh, for, for a good chunk, like just as a dependable, like, hey, can you can we get answers to our questions? We're gonna try and answer as many questions as we can every Friday. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go to my Discord. Give us your comments there. If you have comments, concerns, you have issues you want raised, uh, I will try to raise additional issues to Cerebro. Uh, that, that you think that I missed. I, I did my best uh, to to represent your views, but I couldn't cover everything uh, in in any kind of reasonable time period. So thanks again, Cerebro. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Really appreciate you having me on.